All right, my English teacher friends, Christian Kuhn coming at you again with another writing workshop, affectionately known as the Bob Ross of Composition. And I'd like to share one of my many preoccupations as an English teacher, especially an AP English teacher, the ever elusive sophistication point. Student asked me an interesting question the other day. They said, Mr. Kuhn, what do you think? Would David Sedaris get the sophistication point? And it was like, boom, eureka moment. The other other day, I was uh, just watching some TV and happened to stumble upon David Sedaris's uh, CBS Sunday morning clip uh, on irritating word choices. And I said, lesson plan right here. I remember as a kid aspiring to be a writer. And at 15, 16 years old, I wanted to write like Jack Kerouac and Charles Bukowski and even Jim Morrison of the Doors. So I would study their prose and emulate their style, their voice, their technique, their rhythm until ultimately I could stand on my own and be my own writer without having to emulate somebody. And I think the the trick of emulation is actually a good art, uh, whether or not you're learning a musical instrument or even doing simple apprenticeship. Right, You often emulate a master until you develop your own fluency with it. So in this particular lesson plan, what I want to do is have students basically write their own monologue focusing on irritating word choices. So what I'll do is run you through the, uh, the lesson from top to bottom and tell you how to uh, run it. And then I modeled how to do it. And uh, I'll show you my little monologue on irritating word choices. So before we launch in, one of the things I do is I have my students watch David Sedaris's piece three times. So usually when we're doing like rhetorical analysis or a poem or something. I always have my guys read things three times to really get the full essence of it. So it's uh, free on YouTube. If you just go and type in on irritating word choices, CBS Sunday morning, you readily can find it and it's right there for you. And it's quite fascinating to see. So a few of you might be familiar with my work and know that I've been talking about voice masters, the AP Dream Team voice masters. And I did a unit the other day where I had Lisa Simpson rewrite uh, Where the Wild Things Are. And it was a really cool unit that I did with my students just to practice this voice, this rhythm, this flow. And we made a cast of characters who we think would get the sixth point on the rubric, the sophistication point. And on this slide, I put a couple of those uh, those characters. So we said Morgan Freeman, Lisa Simpson, Rory Gilmer, Ralphie from The Christmas Story, David from Schitt's Creek, Walt Clyde Frazier of New York Knicks fame, Niles Frazier, Northern Exposure characters like we were thinking Chris Stevens, the radio show host, Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City, Jane and Daria we had, um, a whole bunch of people. Spike Lee made the list. So what students did for that particular unit was rewrite a children's story from one of these particular voices. We think that all of these characters have the chops to be slam dunk sixes. And we added to the list David Sedaris. So he unquestionably has the pizzazz, the spunk, the flair to get that sixth point. So here are the guidelines that we put together for this exercise. So the first thing is watch the video at least three times. As a class, let's break down Sedaris's approach and build a central or a general template or scaffold for our use. So in watching the his his monologue, you'll see that he focuses on three words and then he does this narrative thread. I'll model for you how to how to do that. Um, and then I have my students choose any three words or expressions that irritate them. And you'll be surprised. Kids are irritated by a lot of their own verbiage. So a lot of the, the, the vernacular and the colloquial that students use uh, is actually grading to them a little bit. And then they're going to write a monologue hi highlighting how these three words or expressions irritate them in the style and manner of Sidera. So I want them to emulate his voice, rhythm, flow, his chops as best as possible. So in an exercise like this, you really have to go back to my old adage of this. 
you got to Bob Ross your instruction, right? I'm always peddling the question, what if we taught composition like Bob Ross teaches painting? And when we do that, we position ourselves as the expert writers in the classroom and we quote unquote paint with and for our students. So I'm going to show you my exemplar, my model that I wrote for my students uh, to do this. And I encourage teachers all the time when I work with them in the National Writing Project or if I'm doing presentations for NCTE, really position yourself as an expert writer in the classroom. It helps demystify things, but you also can see sort of the bullet holes in your lesson plans too and uh, work through the assignments and then you can sort of gauge what difficulties your students are going to have uh, before you hurl an assignment at them. So, Let's take a look at a few uh, exemplars here and I'll show you my monologue. So here is my first slide. If I had mad sick writing skills, I'd be able to convey to you the extent to which I want to put my head through a freaking brick wall whenever someone is amazed beyond the point of being both mad and sick in mutually exclu exclusive ways. Like that prattling sentence, it's mad sick in its layers of connotative and denotative implications. Let's say that someone of the oak of LeBron James makes a spectacular dunk that posterizes an opponent like none we've ever seen before. Dude, you see that mad sick dunk? Or some kid struts into the prom with some mad sick tuxedo all while rolling up in a mad sick limousine. The dunk is perhaps mad because it is sick? Maybe the emphatic nature of its forcefulness caused a bit of ire and angst that somehow and in some way caused someone to get sick. You know, the malice of the dunk first caused a sniffle, then a full-blown bout of explosive diarrhea that progressed into a debilitating case of gout. The limo and the tux? Well, since they went to the prom together, Pamela and Sue got mad sick and then they barfed during the Macarena and then later busted out with monkeypox during the chicken dance, which, by the way, was during the height of the bird flu epidemic. It is what it is. But dude, your mad sick car just got totaled by a drunk. Yeah, it is what it is. You imagine God naming the earth? He points to his wristwatch and asks Moses what people would should call such a contraption. Then he points to the lightning piercing the clouds and asks, What yonder is this, Moses? It is what it is. Whatever. It is what it is that my bank account is empty because nobody seems to have got woke about the fact that our energy bills and food expenses have more than doubled in less than a year. What it is is that that just plain old stinks. Whatever, I can hear some guy on the opposite political aisle say. No, not only am I mad and sick that it is what it is, but whatever. Who in the hell ever wants to listen to a man that has a voice that emulates a weary sniffle and a broken diaphragm? There is a yin and there is a yang. Not only am I mad and sick, that is what it, uh, I just read that one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In knowing that great truth, I can accept the eureka of it all. It is what it is, whatever. Let's just leave it at that and say that all is fine and the world is fine. Fine, I'm fine, fine. So you can see there, I focused on three little, you know, expressions, words that irritate me. And I kind of copped the best of my ability, a David Sedaris tone around it. One of the things I think is integral to sophistication is oscillating or teeter-tottering back and forth between the colloquial tad bit of vernacular and the academic tier two. So you can see that students really have to keep their academic diction up. I call that tier two level vocabulary, just basic average SAT level caliber words. But I really think that good sophisticated writers sprinkle just a tad bit. And, and I encourage you, look at, look at college board samples uh, where, where they're showing sophistication. A tad bit of vernacular and colloquial goes a far way. So that's it for this particular lesson. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just want to drop me a line, my email address is teachingwritingcoach at gmail.com. 
Also note, I'm a lead teacher for National Writing Project and a lead contributor for NCTE. So if you want more information on our PD offerings or any of my consulting offerings, feel free to visit my webpage at www.teachinghowtowrite.com. That's it from here. Happy teaching, happy writing, be well, and I hope that this unit, this lesson serves you well and your kids eat it up. Take care for now. Thank <laughs> you.